So now when I'm in request, it's a blue. When I'm in planning, it's like a greenish. When I'm in initiate, it's purple. Execution turns into like a yellow gray. Red is saved for closed, right? Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today I wanted to continue working on our project management app. Now this is for your organization and it's for all projects. That's the idea of this Power App is to have an overall look of all your projects in your organization at your place of business. Now I just wanted to talk more about project management before we get into the app. So if we look at things from a PMI perspective, about 70% of projects fail globally. And you know, that, that comes from you know, costs, not meeting the schedule, uh, gathering requirements, correct, you know, your deliverables. And if we kind of scroll down here, you know, we can see things like Forbes, why no one can manage a project, especially technology people, technology companies, you know, why IT projects still fail. So a lot of it has to do with people. Um, that's what they, you know, Harvard Business kind of looked up is that a lot of projects fail due to the people. You know, you want to pick the right people. But with Power Apps, we can't pick the right people, but we can give you a set of tools. And so if we can give a set of tools that are easier, that's easier for the CIOs, the owners of companies to be able to look at all their projects from a big picture, I believe we can save your business, your corporation, your department, your agency, whatever it is, uh, money, time, and make you more successful. Okay, so we have our form here. We created a gallery last week and we have some data in here and we put some data in Dataverse for Teams. So if you wanna watch the previous video on how we created this, you can watch that. But today I wanna to work on the first form and that's gonna be creating a new project. And when we think of a new project, I don't think, oh, you start your project, no. There has to be a project request. You at your company may have many projects and you may need to look at all of them before you decide which ones to move forward with. Maybe some of them are better for the budget, maybe some fit your schedule better. And I believe that if we start with a project request, that's the right step for our first projects in this gallery here. So when we click new, I wanna say new project request. Right, so when you click on it, you're requesting a new project or a company has requested a project. And when we click on this, we're gonna to go to a new screen. And I'm just gonna choose a blank one. We could do header footer, but I, I prefer blank just because it gives me that white sheet of paper, the canvas that I'm working on that Power Ups kind of says. I feel like Bob Ross when they say canvas, you know, you're up there painting. But yeah, this is a canvas. It is our painting and we are going to make an app for Teams and Power Apps. Now the first thing I wanna do is, is gather the project request. So we could come in here, add data with data and have a form you know, built out for us really, really quick. Like that's how fast Power Apps is. It can literally put together a form for you right away based off your tables. But I wanna create something custom. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some containers in there. And the reason I'm doing containers is because this is Microsoft Teams it needs to you know, be responsive based on the Teams window. So first I do a vertical container, then I'm gonna add a horizontal container. So for the width and height of each container, I want it to be parent.width or parent.height. So for width, I want it to be parent.width, and for the height, I want it to be parent.height. Okay, so now whatever we put in our containers will resize based vertically and horizontally. Now, if we look at our first screen, we did have a container toolbar here, and we had three containers, actually. We had uh, a top bar, then we had our columns listed out, and then we had another container for our gallery. Now, I adjusted my containers. I do have new project request up here. We will change that later. But inside container four, I want to insert a form. And I'll probably do an edit form right away. And for the fields, I'll use my project lists from Dataverse for Teams. So before we get into all of this, one thing we want to do is when we hit play, it's blank. And that's because of our items property in our form is not set up yet. And also we're not in a new form. So here, our form in our items property, so we have items here on the right side. We can also go to it in the properties. We want to set this up as our gallery1.selected. 
So whatever we've selected, that's what we're going to see. So let's go back to the first screen. And on New Project Request, we're going to do On Select. It's going to navigate us to Screen 2, probably on a fade. I like fades. And then we are going to say New Form on Form 1. And actually, new form on form one should probably come before we navigate. It just kind of helps, you know, if new forms first and it doesn't appear so slowly. So now when I click on new project request, it navigates us to the form and everything's blank. Let's add a back button. And so for our toolbar here, I'm actually going to have it take up the entire space, the space between. And now we have the back button on the left side and new project request on the right side, which is what we want. And the back button on select is just going to take us back on a fade. All right, so now we can click back and go back to our gallery. Now we want a way to edit these uh, projects. So we need an edit icon in here. There's lots of different ways you could do this. You could add an edit button up here. Um, we can add a pencil tool inside the gallery. For this time, I'm just going to add a pencil tool in the gallery. So now I have it here in my gallery. Now it may not be positioned correctly when we click play, but for now it's working. I'm just going to, we'll fix that later when that becomes a problem. I just want to get on to working on the form. So this pencil tool is going to navigate us to screen two on another fade. And this is going to be edit form dot form one. Okay, so here's more. I've seen arguments. Okay, only use patch. Only use you know update your form this way. Only use update if. My suggestion is it depends on how much work you want to put into this. If you want to not do a lot of work and just kind of have it out of the box, then you could easily just do submit form. So right here on this button. We can change it from new project request, so the text. We can say save, you can say submit. We'll just say save. So that's what this button does. And on select, submit form. Form one. Now that's the easy way out, right? And sometimes easier is better, right? There's, I've seen arguments online or, or videos that says only use patch. Well, keep it simple. Keep it simple is the objective of any app development. And we could decide if we want to do submit form or patch depending on how complex our form is. But for this form, it's super easy. It's just a project request. We're just going to submit form. Now, I don't really want start and end, right? This is a project request. I'm going to create two new columns in Dataverse for Teams and call them Proposed Start, Proposed End. Now that we refresh the database, we can come to Add Field and we can find my two new columns, Proposed Start, Proposed End. Now for Start and End, Proposed Start and End, I did say date only. So I'm going to remove time uh, from our selections. So for our date fields, you'll notice that we have a parent dot width minus 48 divided by 2. That's because there was hours and minutes in there. I'm just going to remove the divided by on each of these on the width. Then I also need to come with, if you're kind of struggling with it, you can come to width fit and just turn that to false. And then the same thing on proposed start, width fit, turn that to false. So now we can resize it. We have proposed start, proposed end, uh, manager, maybe we want manager up here. Requesting department up here. Proposed start, proposed in project size. So I believe this one probably has the width fit on, so we'll change that to false. Project phase, width fit to false. Now I've had this question come up on different um, YouTube videos, and that's if, oh, well now we're in edit, things are not showing up the way we want it to do. We're in new form, things are not showing up the way they should be. I like to create a variable depending on what mode my form is in. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's go back. Now, when I click new project request, I want a variable to tell me if it's new or if it's in edit mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set 
variable, uh, we can call it um, form mode. I guess we'll just we'll keep it simple. Variable form mode, and, and that's going to be new. When we click on this button, it's also going to set a variable, and I'll put this before the navigate. It's going to set a form mode of new, and it's just a text field. And this text field, we'll put it on our, our form. This text field will be up top here. We'll just put it in here, insert. So for now, I'll just put it in the center. And this is going to be a variable form mode. And we can center it, you know, just so we can keep track of it. So this is going to tell us that we're in variable, uh, in new in our variable. I'm going to go back again. And when we click the pencil tool, and I don't think I'm going to keep this pencil tool forever, but uh, set variable form mode to edit. So now when we click on the pencil tool and we come in, we're in edit. So let's go back. And I know this is such a simple concept, but this question comes up a lot. We're in new. All right, so if we want to do the default, a, of a dropdown in Dataverse. So this is different than if we did SharePoint or Excel. What we're going to do is we're going to come to this dropdown and we're going to go to default selected items and we're going to use that variable. So I'm, you could do, you know, display mode equals form mode new, but we're going to use that variable we created, which is variable form mode. And we're going to say, you know, if it's equal to new, then what we want is the project phase dot request else it's equal to parent.default and we want to do it inside brackets just like parent.default all right so now it's going to default to request on a new item so let's go back so now you notice if we go to lab project right here it's on execution by default if we go back and we click new project request it defaults to request, which is what we want. And we want to make sure that this is uneditable. So on the display mode, we're going to do, use that variable again. If variable form mode equals new, then we want display mode dot view. Else we'll do display mode dot edit. Okay, so now let's go ahead and you know create something. Let's do, let's do water cooler project, um, and the manager will just say is me. And we could make this a people picker if we wanted. Requesting department, we could also make this a choice right now. But um, let's just say human resources. Proposed start date will be today. Every project needs an end. We'll do that. Uh, project size is small and it defaults to re request. We cannot click here, we hit save. And now we have a new water cooler project. Um, no percent complete. Uh, project phase is request and the start date and end date is wrong. So we can fix that later. Um, when it's in request, we'll, maybe we'll make start date and end date and percent complete blank. Maybe we'll have two galleries, one for project requests and then it doesn't come to this gallery until it becomes a project. Uh, those are some ideas that will come on later down the road. Right now I wanted to create something cool maybe for a project phase. I want to create like a bar at the top that tells us which phase we're in. So in order to do this, and this is just an idea, I'm just going to throw something together. I'm going to create another container just like that one. And I'm going to put it inside my container here, but I don't want the buttons. No buttons, no labels, it's just a blank container. We're gonna move it up. So let me insert HTML text. Oh, inside this container, container six. And I want five of these for each one of my phases. So I'm just gonna copy this uh, five times. Three, four, five. So I grabbed some code from one of my old uh, YouTube videos and that's where I add some linear gradients. So I have some colors in here. It starts off dark blue. I want it to be like a light blue instead of a dark blue. Now, if you notice a few things don't fit, all we have to do is come over here um, on the right side, auto height, I can turn that on. That's gonna get rid of my scroll bar padding. I can change each of these to zero. Okay, so I have a nice color on there, but 
one thing I was realizing is that I couldn't get the request to center right, the, the words. So what I do is I use that container to find where it should be. So I go in here and I insert a label, but not inside a container. And I'm using container six. So for the label, I'm gonna say Y value, container six dot Y, puts it in the right spot. The X value, container six dot X. So that's gonna keep it in that spot. Now the width, is going to be my HTML. So this is HTML request dot width height HTML request dot height. And then I just center it and I can type in request. So now you can see that that's highlighted on request. It's in the right spot. If we resize it, if we resize it in different size windows, it's still going to be in the same spot. So if we go to a tablet, it's still in the same spot. It may need to adjust for a second, but it's in the right spot. That's where I want it. Now, what I want to do is make this colored depending on what phase we're in. So let's see here. We're going to say if gallery one dot selected dot uh, project phase equals a uh, request then we're going to give it color else div with an ending parentheses it doesn't like that that's because this needs to be project Phase dot request because it's dataverse. So now, so if we come in here and we go to a request one, it's highlighted blue. So now I'm going to do that all the way down. Planning, initiate, execution, and closed. I'm going to color code them. Okay, so now I, I rearranged all of them in project phase. I have, you know, request, planning, initiation, execution, and closed. So now when I'm in request, it's a blue. When I'm in planning, it's like a greenish turquoise. When I'm in initiate, it's purple. Execution turns into like a yellow gray. I don't want people to be scared, right? You got to think about these colors, right? You don't want execution to be red. No, red is saved for closed, right? So closed is red. Okay, closed. Everything is shut down. We have closed the project. And that's kind of how I'm going to go down that line. So... I believe this is the start of a form. And this is just my first form for project requests. So I think that's all I'm gonna get into for this week is kind of showing how you can you know, use HTML colors, make this pop, make this look great. We could do the same thing for the buttons. We could really make the buttons pop. We could add icons in here, SVGs, lots of cool things. I'm just giving you ideas. Just think about this, I'm giving you ideas. I'm kind of tying it to project management. So I think next week we're going to create a new form. And this new form is going to be when we're done with request and we become in the initiation phase. This is where you're going to fill out the details of the project. This is where you gather requirements. So once we move the project out of request into planning, we're going to change the form. And I believe that's what I'm going to do next week. And if you want to, you know, give me a suggestion, go right ahead. Add it to YouTube. Uh, comments. That's where I'm going to see it easiest. Um, go ahead and add a comment in there and say, hey, how do you do this? And we can work that into uh, these YouTube videos. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. I'll see you next week. We will create a new form once we move out of a request. Thank you.